Hey there, it's Professor S, and I want to talk about endocytosis for the next five minutes or so, specifically the three different forms of endocytosis. Now you should remember, endocytosis is one of the two forms of bulk transport, those active transport processes that move substances into or out of cells using vesicles. Now in the case of endocytosis, the inward movement of substances it occurs in three different forms, and they're distinctly different both in terms of what's moved and how it's pulled in. One of the things I'm going to rail against a little bit here, and a lot more probably in a separate video, I don't like textbooks using the literal translation as definition approach. And if you're a student, you know what I'm talking about. They give you the bold-based term in the book and immediately follow it, either in parentheses or in text, with an in quotes literal translation. And it's often catchy, which is why it's easy to remember, but it's also usually an obstacle in my experience to actually understanding the process because some of those literal translations are confusing uh, and, and misleading and oftentimes they're very incomplete. So I'm going to talk about them here, I'm going to mention them, I'm going to dismiss them, and I want to focus you in on the things you need to understand if you really want to grasp how endocytosis really works. So let's begin with phagocytosis, cell eating. Here's our eukaryotic cell, there's its phospholipid bilayer. It's called cell eating, phagocytosis, cell eating. It's called phagocytosis because we're pulling in fairly large solid objects, like this bacterial cell above my head. We're, we're looking here at um, objects that are not molecular in nature. Cellular debris, smaller cells, objects that are clearly way too big to be engaged with uh, integral membrane proteins for transport purposes. And it's not just what's moved, but it's how it's moved. So if you watch, our cell is going to engulf that bacterial cell, phagocytosis, by extending the membrane around it. Now those extensions are called pseudopods. And as those pseudopods form, they essentially wrap around the object to be engulfed, and once they meet, pull it into a vesicle, and it then is in the cell. That's phagocytosis. Solid objects, larger objects being pulled into the cell when the cell extends the membrane around that object. Contrast that with pinocytosis, cell drinking. It's liquid, not solid. But really when we say it's liquid, we mean large amounts of fluid that the substance is dissolved in the water around the cell. We're trying to pull in a whole bunch of that fluid at once. And not only are we pulling in something different than in phagocytosis, but the mechanism is different. If you watch, we have a number of different sol solutes uh, above my head there that the cell is going to pull in. And those solutes are pulled in when the entire membrane at that location pulls inward. It invaginates. And that invagination creates a vesicle that engulfs all of the fluid right next to that location in the membrane. So in pinocytosis, unlike phagocytosis, the membrane is invaginating to pull in large amounts of adjacent fluid as opposed to extending the cell's membrane around a larger object. The third type of endocytosis is called receptor-mediated endocytosis. Now at a glance it looks superficially similar to pinocytosis but with an important distinction. Now if you look at that mass of fluid again, there are a couple different molecule types up there. Maybe the cell is only looking to pull in a particular type of molecule in bulk. Uh, it's a molecule so it isn't going to be engulfed in one big go by pseudopods, but we need to get a whole bunch of it accumulated in one location which is accomplished through integral membrane protein receptors. A whole bunch of these receptors clustered at a single location. They'll bind to only certain substances. Those substances binding triggers endocytosis and you can see an invagination occurring at the location of the integral membrane proteins and they're selectively then pulling in only certain substances over others. And that's the key. That's what differentiates it from pinocytosis. Pinocytosis we're taking in whatever fluids next to the membrane. In receptor mediated endocytosis, it's specific to whatever things can bind to the receptors. And just one final quick note usually that region of the membrane where those receptors are located is coated on the interior by uh, a protein layer, uh, using usually a protein like clathrin. I'm not showing that here or getting into it because that's sort of a next step in the learning process. And what I want you to focus on here is just the essence of what receptor mediated endocytosis is. And there you have all three forms of endocytosis.
right, so this is just gonna be a, a, a just a regular take, right? Yes, yeah, a completely normal take. Like no projectiles, no none of that. You're not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna do anything to you during the filming. Okay. Hey, this is Professor S, and if you enjoyed that video, here are a couple others that you might enjoy as well. And uh, don't forget to hit the button to subscribe so you can see everything that I'm putting out as it comes out. Thanks a lot. Is that good? Yes. Perfect.